Dara, Irish Ferries is one of the leading carriers between Ireland and the UK and France. How is 2017 season shaping up? Thanks, Owen. Well, 2017 so far, and the bulk of our summer season is, is done and dusted at this stage, it's looking to be a strong year. Uh, last year was a good year for us too, so we're quite happy with that performance-wise. Uh, of course, the mix of business has changed fundamentally. Uh, with all that's going on in the British market, mm -hmm. uh, we're not seeing the performance growth out of Britain as we would have liked to have done, and actually the growth that we're experiencing at the moment is actually coming ex uh, Ireland, outbound from Ireland, both on the Irish Sea routes but also on Ireland, France, and the continent from that perspective. So, on one level, it's positive, positive position for us. On another level, it's slightly disappointing in the sense that we would have always expected Britain to be leading at the forefront of the vanguard of our business uh, development. Uh, we rely very, very strongly in the British market. So it's, it's success in that marketplace is critical to success for our business on a, on a year to year basis. And of course, ferry passengers are, are, are extremely valuable to Irish tourism. Sometimes I think they're, they're underappreciated, but they tend to bring their own cars, stay longer, and, and travel right around the country. Yeah. So your overseas marketing campaigns, promoting Ireland and Irish ferries, are, are, are very important to the sector as a whole. Tell us a bit about your sort of marketing strategy overseas. Well, yeah, and I'm glad you pointed that out, actually, because uh, it's, it's one of those uh, messages we continuously try and get out there, not only that uh, people who bring their own vehicle with them tend to stay longer and travel further, certainly in comparison to other short haul markets, I'm talking about the British market specifically now, but uh, on top of that, but uh, there's a better seasonal spread. Mm. They tend to come in and travel at times, than, uh, at, at times when other markets don't, so you get more May traffic, you get more September traffic than you would do with some of the other markets, um, and you get a better regional spread. So they tend to end up in places that other people don't tend to go to, so certainly from a Midlands perspective, and certainly from you know uh, uh, the southeast perspective, uh, and in the northwest as well. So you you know not only do they do the Ring of Kerry, and not only do they do Dublin uh, and Cork and Kerry and so on, they also do. Uh, all those other bits in between. I imagine they're, they're, they're genuinely real holiday makers. So as you say, they might touch base with friends or relatives yeah. in a particular area, but then they continue for the yeah. rest of their time and they're that'd literally be, here on That would be our holiday. view, that would be our view. And on that basis then, when you're communicating, when you're promoting to them in the British or the continental markets, uh, we find out that it's, it's absolutely critical that you have to talk to them about the destination first and foremost. Yeah. You have to sell them the idea of going to Ireland. So Dara, as you have to sell Ireland initially as the, as the destination, you must do quite a bit of work with Tourism Ireland in terms of cooperative marketing? We do. We work very, very closely with Tourism Ireland. We find them a great partner. This year we delivered two huge pieces of work uh, jointly, cooperatively uh, with uh, with Tourism Ireland in the British market. One was a national campaign which worked very, very well for us targeting the summer business and produced good results. And one which is the second year we've done it and it worked really, really well as well and hopefully uh, uh, it will be continued on the next year. It's a, it's a more regional based approach. So a regional market in Britain uh, targeting and communicating the benefits of travelling to a regional market in Ireland using our Rosslare Pembroke route as the corridor of choice. So people in South West England, South West Britain, uh, travelling to South East Ireland uh, on that basis. And of course the benefit of that is people travelling with their car, not only do they stay in the area that you've promoted to them, but they're less likely to travel further afield. You know, and we've had people talking to us about travelling to all the usual destinations, Cork and Kerry, Connemara, and even, I'm sure in the future, they'll travel up to the new Centre Parks uh, facility up in Ballymann and Longford, which is an amazingly exciting venture uh, in terms of development of the product. It's so another just, compelling reason to come to Ireland, and, 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 and hopefully if it's via Irish ferries, then, uh, well, then well, well, everyone's well, aware. <laughs> now, if we could just get the British market, the investment from a promotional perspective in the British market, back on track, as we would see it, then I think we have all the different ingredients to, to, to go back to growth in the British market in the coming years. And the trick for us at the present point in time is doing all that, but, uh, but at the same time we're having to invest more to get that message across. Yes. Uh, and then of course we're being impacted uh, by the weakness of sterling, the, the greater weakness of sterling now in terms of our revenues. So we're investing more, spending more, and we're not getting it back on the mm. revenue line from that perspective. So that's why this year is, while it's strong on the above line metrics, the ingredient, the composition of the business is becoming much more trickier and we believe that that's going to continue on into 2018 yeah. and possibly beyond at this point. Yeah, unfortunately time. Sterling's weakness seems to be a, a, a structural thing for the next year or two certainly while all this Brexit uncertainty unfolds. Uh, absolutely and, uh, and given the weakness of Sterling that just makes the whole situation that much more difficult.
Absolutely. And, 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 and we mentioned Brexit and, and, the, and the weakness of sterling, but there's kind of more fundamental things that are at play with Brexit that will have an impact on, on, on Ireland and Irish tourism. And yes. I suppose Irish ferries, I'm thinking of things like, you know, freight, customs, common travel area, all those areas must be, must yeah, be an issue the, of concern. The, 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 big, the big problem with, with discussions about Brexit at the present point in time is, is that's what they are, their discussions. Yes. Nobody really has any answers at this point. At this point. But those discussions and that uncertainty breeds frustration. Yes. Um, and there's three areas that we believe are critical to our future and our fortunes, and also fortunes of obviously uh, the destination. The sterling impact and the comparison against euro and the weakening of sterling against the stronger euro and that whole value for money perception. So on one level, it's great to see the budget yesterday, the maintenance and the retention of the 9% VAT rate. And if that benefit is being passed along to customers along the way, well, we'll see there's a, absolutely a positive coming out of that. And um, the other two things though, in relation to the Brexit issue are the retention or the possibility of retention of the common travel area and then also the customs union. Common travel area from our perspective, the ability for people, not only British visitors, but also overseas visitors coming through Britain to travel unhindered and without delay to Ireland is a strategic imperative mm -hmm. to the development and the future development of Irish tourism. If that is changed on any practical level, then it's another hindrance, it's another roadblock in the decision making process mm -hmm. and that could have serious repercussions. Mm -hmm. The customs union is another issue, that's a much more practical issue. Um, time is money is a great cliche, we're all familiar with it, but in reality in the freight and logistics business particularly, time is money, yeah. just in time. Everything is just in time now and if there's additional checks or additional delays, even if they're modest in, in size or scale or perceived to be modest size or scale, the cumulative effect may have a fundamental impact on how business has been done between the two marketplaces. So that's an issue not only for tourism, but all for the broader economy, the import-export business and the import-export scale of things. Uh, and that's something that everybody is very, very concerned about. But again, at the present point in time, there are no answers. Yeah. There are only concerns. There are only hypotheses. And until we get some more clarity coming from the British side of things, but also from the EU side of things, we're none the wiser. Yeah. And we all hope common sense, common sense ultimately prevails. Um, 2018, looking ahead, it's going to be an exciting year. You've got a, a new ship uh, coming um, on stream or, or on, on, on the water, yes. the WB8, which yeah. was just named last week. That's Tell right. us a little bit about that ship and what your plans are for it. We're very excited. We're very excited and uh, it's good to touch on some good news. Um, uh, it's uh, the latest phase, investment phase that the company's delivering. We're introducing this new ship. She's, uh, which should be a record beater in terms of size and scale and in terms of capacity. Um, we're talking about the capacity of you know 1,800 passengers, 1,200 cars specifically, uh, and 440 cabins. So there's huge extra capacity we're, we're committing to routes between Ireland and the UK, uh, Ireland and Britain, and also between Ireland and the continent, mainland Europe. Uh, we'll be launching the details of the specifics of the route network and the schedule over the coming weeks, and then we'll be opening for business because we're looking at a new ship with all the extra capacity and we're committed to be able to deliver that uh, effectively with good solid fares, good solid, uh, you know, attractive uh, pricing uh, right the way through for 218 yeah. and beyond. It's very, it's very exciting and it's, it's quite an investment on behalf of Irish Ferries. I think you've spent over 100 million euro on the actual ship and the, and the, and the spec. Yeah, the, the contract price is 144 million. Uh, it is a commitment, there's no doubt about it, but we, 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 we as an organisation, we're committed to ensuring that, there, that we can facilitate growth and development in the import and export uh, sector, but also we're committed to tourism. You know, and as we said at the very outset of this, the British market is our key market. Uh, and we have seen growth in that in the last number of years. Uh, we're, we're seeing a, a significant uplift in the repeat and the frequency levels of our business. So we're getting people coming in with us and we're getting them coming back with us again. Mm. And that's very strong. And we do feel that there is opportunity to mainland Europe, uh, outbound from Ireland to Europe, and also inbound from Europe from that perspective. And that extra capacity, which may or may not see its way into those markets, will absolutely, uh, will absolutely be the... Uh, Will contribute in that regard. Great. Darren, I'm delighted the season is performing well and thanks for the Irish Ferries contribution to Irish tourism over, over the years and best of luck with the exciting year that's ahead of you. Thank you very much and look forward to summer 2018.